Knoxville Game Design, February 2018, two-year recap spectacular with Jacob, Joe, and Levi. Welcome everyone to the February 2018 Knoxville Game Design Podcast. We are developers in the East Tennessee area who develop games for fun and we do a lot of game jams and get-togethers and things like that. Um, This month we have three people currently on the line. Uh, First of all, we have Jacob. Hi, I'm Jacob. (laughs) So are, are you in Knoxville? Is that right? Yeah, I'm in Knoxville right at the moment. Okay. We have uh, Joe Miller. You're still in Morristown, right, Joe? Yep. Hello. Still in Morristown. And I'm Levi Smith. I'm in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Uh, So first of all, I'm going to do a little bit of news. And John Lane, who uh, showed up to our group uh, a couple of times... He's actually looking for a Blender developer uh, that can do rigging and things like that. So if anybody out there in the Knoxville area knows Blender, you may want to get in touch with John Lane. Um, I'll link his uh, information in the show notes to show details. Uh, I do quite a bit of Blender, but I just don't have enough free time to work on anything else. Um. And the next thing on news, uh, Joe, I know you've been working on uh, doing a lot of stuff. Uh, you got Khufu's delivery service on Steam. Yeah, I, I uh, finally figured I'd go ahead and figure out the rest of that process after it got greenlit back in September. Yeah. Um, and it, it overall wasn't too bad, but it still took a couple days to kind of figure out how to get the Steam SDK integrated and how to get the files on Steam's servers uh but once i got all that straightened out and um i probably would have gone live a little bit sooner but they make you wait like two weeks from when you're ready to before you can actually publish oh okay i didn't know uh, that one of the things they do to combat the uh, asset flippers and copy people or whatever that there's a bunch of yeah people just pushing stuff out there yeah, and still, I don't have the capability of adding cards yet, which it says they review games daily. Uh, I haven't uploaded any assets for it, but I'm hoping it would get turned on that I'd be able to do some trading cards, too. Yeah, have you done any achievements yet? I've started. I, it's not on the live version yet, though. I've I've made a couple, and I've kind of mapped out. I'm going to have about 20. Um but I got to make sprites for that too, like the unachieved sprite and the achieved sprite, where you do like grayscale and color. Or if you're yeah. going to have color in your achievements, the little icons. Yeah, there's just so much stuff that people don't realize that, that goes into publishing a game. I mean, I've done some stuff on the Microsoft Store and like all the screenshots and the trailer videos. And if you're doing achievements and cards and all that, it's a, uh, just aside from yeah. making the game itself. I mean, there's a lot you got to add a, a bunch of assets too, where they, they want stuff that's like a 352 by 76 for the mini banner and like the ones for how it looks in the search results or how it looks on the the homepage or whichever where it's in the featured section or on the sidebar. So you got to have like pixel perfect uh, images uploaded. They can't, they won't resize for you. Yeah, so that's, if it wants it to be 352 by 68 or whatever, you got to just go make one. Yeah, that's the way the Microsoft story is too. I mean, they want like 20 different images, all of different proportions and sizes and resolutions. So I actually wrote a script that will take an image and like scale it the best that it can to generate all those images. But yeah, I, I know I what you're a, going through. I did a couple, but some of them didn't really look great when they were cut or scaled like that. So I ended up like actually messing around and trying to make stuff that looked good at the all the different sizes yeah because i know when you like if you take a small image and you upscale it, then it starts looking pixelated and i know the microsoft store has like restrictions on the file size too so they want like a huge 2048p image and and then it's also got to be like under two megabytes so. <laughs> 
crazy constraints. But yeah, uh, everyone out there, check out Kufi's delivery service. Uh, <laughs> the best way I can describe it is kind of like Tetris. You got like the Tetris blocks, and they come down on a conveyor belt. I'm showing your uh, Steam trailer right now. Yeah. And you take those blocks and you drag them from the conveyor belt and you fill in the different patterns. I think, uh, Joe, you referred to it as what, like, kind of like tessellations or something like that? Tangrams. Tangrams, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to fit the pieces to match the shape. Yeah, I remember doing that like when I was in school a long time ago, little, little plastic pieces and fitting them together. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, and I know you have a few different modes uh, that you can play through. So yeah, that's uh, Kufi's delivery service. I, I was always wondered where you got that name, and I actually looked it up, and like Kufu's like some ancient Egyptian god or something. Yeah, he's one of the great pyramids over in Giza. He's just one of the the builders. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I never knew that. Just yeah. not the main one, I guess, that people know. Yeah, but I actually so, uh, uh, went to Egypt back in like uh, 2008, so just kind of something that I pulled out of my repertoire, yeah. random that's, stuff. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I've never been to Egypt or any <laughs> any place over there in Africa or anywhere like that. But yeah, that's going to be pretty cool seeing all the pyramids yeah. and the ancient relics and monuments and things like that. Yeah, I've been I've been all over the place, so that's uh, that's one of the things the Navy will do for you. <laughs> yeah i've been to japan that's like the one time i ever like really left the country before. that's like the only place i haven't been that i really want to go it's never made it there it's really and cool i was there for went. one of the deployments i was on we were heading that way but we ended up going to thailand instead oh man which was so cool and we did thailand and singapore but yeah. japan would have been awesome yeah, I really like Akihabara. If you're into anime and games and things like that, that's the place to be. They got a place called Super Potato with a bunch of retro games and uh, Yodabashi Camera in Akiba. It's like Best Buy, but like eight stories tall. It's <laughs> insane. Um, just building upon buildings upon buildings. But yeah, that's Kufi's Delivery Service by joe miller double square games double square llc dollar 99 on steam so check that out uh give it a buy and really cool if you're into puzzle type games i really recommend it um okay so i guess uh we'll go on to sh uh, show off jacob did you have anything you wanted to show off to us this month i actually did so oh, let me let me stop screen sharing let me just try to see if I can screen share uh, application window share. All right. So, is it show let's see if it's showing. It acts so, like yeah. it's starting to come up. It's, I still see a blank screen right now. So you're, still, you're just seeing a black screen at the moment? Yeah, we just see a black screen right now. Joe, do you see anything? Uh, well, now I see him, but... If I open it, can you see it? Because I opened it at the moment. Yes, I just see your camera right now. Uh, okay, so... Well, if it's full screen, it usually takes a second to switch over. Yeah. Let's wait for a second, then. While I fiddle around in here. Or I can just probably just test this out. How about this rain? It's been crazy. <laughs> yeah. My, my, uh, under my house is flooded, so right after this podcast, I got to go buy a pump or something <laughs> to get. Uh oh. Yeah, because my hot water heater is under the house, and I won't have any hot water until I get it drained out. <laughs> Hopefully, it isn't completely ruined. But I've had it happen before, and just takes time to dry out. Now you might want to be careful because this game's really loud. Oh, okay. I'll... I, I, I've I've scared myself a couple times launching it. I got my hand on the volume control here. <laughs> if I can actually show you the game, I have to go out of full screen. Go into this. And if you have multiple share. monitors, you got to make sure you pick the right monitor too. Um, 
I only have one on monitor, so... Okay, okay we see oh. it now. Wasteland Kings. Right. So, I edited Wasteland Kings to be a different game, which I call Nuclear uh, nuclear Winter. So, you got a robot, that which releases the plant, a more purple version of the melted guy. The demon kind of looks like the caca demon from Doom. The, rock, the crystal guy is now just a rock guy with a, 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 a babushka hat. Poor guy looks like a fish. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with this guy since I like him the most. Okay. So the game basically looks the same, but instead of bandits, you got robots that turn invisible, and the maggots are red and have horns. Are you seeing game? Yeah, it just looks like a white blank. Uh, window yeah, application right window. Oh, it does. Yeah. Well, that's not good. It's not supposed to be blank. <laughs> I don't know okay. if I have the ability to expand it at all. Yeah, we see it now. It is a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So, if you can make out anything, I got the small purple guy on the screen, which, when he kills these guys, and you right-click, cor uh, corpses explode, so... Oh, that looks really cool. It's kind of like... Hold on. Let me just see if I can turn this down. If possible. Let's just do random. Because I... Oh, let me re-click in this. So... Oh, that's really random. cool. So you got your different, like, class types that you can pick from. So, that, so this game is just kind of like... Something like a nuclear throne, but... You got... It's in Russia, and you got raccoons that attack you. Or squirrels, I guess. That's really cool. It kind of looks like a Zelda uh, Secret of Mana type overhead view. Yeah. You're going around killing the different little critters. This looks really good. Yeah, but instead of any mythical creatures, you're fighting cyborg people that go invisible and mutated squirrels. Oh, I got you. So is, is there a backstory to this? You're just going around killing... Uh, Cyborgs? Are you trying? The cyborgs are evil and trying to take over the world or something. Well, what happens is nuclear warfare, and now the world's ending. So that's basically all that's happening. The mutant squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> that looks Next story, really more or less, is just a bunch of companies go to Russia to see what's going on, <laughs> and so. This guy was a Russian soldier, and now he is rock, because rocks are cool, I guess. And instead of a grenade launcher, you got a bowling ball launcher. Bowling that shoots ball? shoots explosive bowling balls. <laughs> yeah. That looks very cool. Wow. You got, like, the little reticule there, where you can see where you're yeah. shooting. And... <laughs> And I have failed Mother Russia, and I can press Enter to resume Crusade. Oh, you're playing as a Russian. Okay, I got you. Yes. Or the concept of the demon was he's just a tourist from the underworld, and the cyborg's just a weird fit guy from Texas or something. And this guy just kind of appeared, and he has no real purpose. So each character kind of has their own little backstory there, why they're how they're surviving the nuclear uh, apocalypse. Yeah, and if you see the same symbols on the robot and on the rock guy, it's on the rock guy's hat and on this crate, and that's just like I guess a main company. You also got a sword, so that's pretty cool. Very cool. So you can shoot or use your melee weapon there, your sword, yeah. to attack the different creatures and robots. Yeah. And the maggots are also like tourists from the underworld, as the underworld is seeping up, trying to take over as well. Which in the later levels, you actually go to hell, so that's pretty cool. Uh -oh. <laughs> kind of like doing and, and you got a turret there which for some oh I don't know why he's like that but that might be a problem if it is 
Yeah, like all the little particle effects you have in there going on, and whenever you hit yeah. an enemy, they just kind of explode. And looks like you got some. Uh, yeah. That looks fine. Yeah, wherever you're shooting, you got the. Uh, what do they call oh. it? Like the line where you're shooting. <laughs> the guy. Well, it looks like the game froze, so that's fun. Uh oh. <laughs> I might have to just close this out. Or emergency close. There you go. That's very so cool. that was the game, more or less. And I also I, had another game to show. Unless... Land Kings. Now, Jacob, did you say you had a website like on Game Jolt? I couldn't find it last time. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I might. You might have to. It's. I don't quite remember what that website was. With the actual name of it was because I haven't been on it in a very, very long time. Oh, okay. The well, only thing I know of its name is Big Old Tom. Big I Old think. Tom. Yeah, I looked for that and I couldn't find it. Um, if you have, if you do get a website up or a uh, game jolt or itch.io, just have you or your father send me the link and I can put it up on the website. Yeah. So people can find your game. I don't really have anything on there and this isn't published yet because oh, okay. I wasn't really done with it. I did also try to remake Boom a little bit. You know, oh, the yeah. game from the last game jam? Yeah. Like, uh, Legendary. The one that we looked at last time. It, it was really good. Yeah. Hopefully you can see this one. Uh, it looks like it's loading. Yeah. Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, we see the window cut. Oh, yeah, this looks good. Now, see the little cleaver? There's a glitch in later on levels where I don't know how to fix it. Your, like, hand moves over a lot, and you become incredibly slow. Oh. Uh, I see the little uh, projectiles. It looks like there's some guy chained up to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. This is the sewers of pain. You got ghosts and tortured people. Oh, man. If I'm actually able to fix that weird level glitch thing, I was going to make it to where some of these guys would fall down and their torsos would chase you around and make, like, clanking or chain noises or something. But you got this guy who lost his head, so it's on the ground here. Oh, man. <laughs> So the guys chained up, they really don't do anything. They're just there for aesthetic. Decoration. Yeah, decorations, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't strafe or move back or anything because I tried to, like, make it to where the control scheme is much simpler Yeah. because it was using code that I didn't quite understand that much. So I tried to make it simpler so I could understand it. And so there's a problem where when you would strafe, you'd turn that direction, and it was weird and jarring. I didn't like that. So yeah. this is the glitch. You, like, your hand moves way far to, like, off the screen, and you move much slower. Oh, yes. Yeah, and I don't know why that is. Hmm. And I'll probably find that, find that out eventually, but not now, because I don't know how that's like that. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, I've never seen a 3D game and game maker like this. Like basically a. Could even look up and down. Oh, that's pretty oh, wow. cool. I actually got this from a Doom sprite tutorial for Game Maker. Like this entire free mouse look thing. Oh, okay, gotcha. So that's pretty cool. That's very neat. And the music in this area and in the next area is actually from Spelunky. So, oh, okay. you got that. And the gun sounds also from Spelunky. Even though I guess it's not a gun, you're just throwing the souls of these ghosts you found at people. And you got a finish line instead of like... And this is the castle with the knights. Oh, See, there yeah. he is. I remember oh, yeah. these guys. Ah! That reminds me a lot of uh, Wolfenstein 3D, how they have the little knights there. They were just kind of like decorations yeah. there. Can't move. I also <laughs> ran out of ammo until I finally killed them. Apparently, I didn't. Give me that. The knights are supposed to avoid the walls or bounce off them, so that might be something I have to fix. Yeah. Along with this bug here with the hand, which is very annoying. Yeah, just keep yeah, kind of drifting off there to yeah. the side. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to... Just, what would be causing that? 
I like the little checkered line for the exit of the yeah. level. And this is the room of pain, which <laughs> is just the end. There's nothing here. Uh, You're just trapped in this room forever. Just and then you just have to escape to exit. You're going to have people just like waiting there for hours just to see if anything yeah. ever happens. <laughs> it's like, where's the special this... brick to press to get out of here? Other stuff. If you want, I have all this other stuff too that I was working on. Like I have a project for school where I'm making a video game. Oh, that's pretty cool. If you want to see that, and if you if are you interested, want to show it, you can. I'll show that since it's not that. Where is it? Yeah, I remember Pirate when I was in school, we never did do much programming. It seems like we had, like, the Apple II or the Tandy, and we did some very simple, like, put some blocks on the screen, and that was basically it. We never did do any cool game programming or anything. But Now, this game was made from a basis of the game Ink, but you don't cover things in Ink. You collect sand for a pirate skull thing. The game's not quite done, and I only have one area finished. Since I said it wasn't going, I was going. It was going to be a game demo thing, so it's not entirely going to be a full game. Just to have one area and it's lost. Yeah. It's taking a second. Yeah, it looks like it's compiling all your AUG files there, <laughs> your audio files and everything. I did learn a couple of things about states when programming boss, so I might do more with states. It's full screen. It's not what yeah, I want. I just see the blank white screen. Right. right now. Can you see the game? No, or not? I don't see it. It's just white. So something with the full screen, it doesn't like. <laughs> yeah, I can also just press this to quit the game since that's how I did it. I don't know why it's like that. Maybe it's an object or whatever. See it that might be an issue. Let's see what happens when you create. We're looking inside the code of the game. Yeah, so Jacob's going through here, and yeah, I see your. I've done a little bit of Game Maker, um, and uh, it's pretty neat. You just go in there and you can create. I always use like the step or whatever that way you can control what happens on every frame. But it's pretty simple. Like every game, like, I call them game objects. I forget what they're called in Game Maker, but I every, think they're just called objects. Yeah, objects in Game Maker, objects. you can attach different actions, and you can add code um, mm. to those actions to make. Objects do here. different things. Well, I figure this out. You can do whatever. And when I figure it out, we can show it like near the end. Yeah, that'd be cool. Then we can come back. If you have yeah. Okay. Uh, Joe, did you have anything else that you wanted to show off this month? Um, I guess I got one thing. It's. Uh... I saw your Twitter. You're working on something there. It's not very interesting, but it, it was a lot of uh, work to get up and running. Was it like an RTS type thing? Kind of. Um, it's not really... Let's see. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Not really going to be RTS, though, as much as it is um, simulation. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what I was working on was trying to get these... Let's see. Well, first I've been, you know, getting used to Game Maker Studio 2, which hasn't been too bad, but it is different. Yeah, I've used it a little bit. I, I meant to ask you, uh, did you do the latest uh, GM48? I think I skipped the one in January. I, I didn't, no. I didn't do the Ludum Dari either. Yeah, I, I was just kind of burnt out and needed a break from Game Jams. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So I see your little blue guys, I guess, and they're moving around on the roads. It kind of looks yeah. like SimCity. Kind of, yeah. That's what I was sort of going for. And, but more than just getting that working, I have the camera that can be panned around, like oh. draggable, mm -hmm. and zoomed. Oh, that's very cool. Wow. Impressive. And if you don't have a scroll wheel, you can use the zoom buttons as well. Oh. And then I have 
kind of a little UI stuff going on. If you click on one of the people, it brings up a window. Mm-hmm. And you can scroll that a little bit. This That'd be like just, a properties or something. Yeah, or like upgrades and stuff. A, a little options thing. I'm not sure yet. Mm-hmm. And like part of that was messing around with um, the UI and Game Maker and how like if I have the camera zoomed way far out, if I create a object right now, it's going to be really tiny, mm-hmm. even if it's like 800 pixels or a thousand pixels because i'm like four or five x zoomed out on the camera Mm -hmm. uh so i have a a setup where when you click on something it will sneakily zoom in and disable the camera while you're zoomed in oh i got you the same size but then it puts the camera back when you're done otherwise if you clicked on that guy and you didn't do the zoom in and zoom out your window would would be be, itty bitty tiny (laughs) yeah and all the text would be tiny you wouldn't be able to read anything so are those guys like moving? Or, I'm calling them blue guys, I guess. Are they yeah. moving along a set path, or is there like uh, some a- AI in there? Random right now. Oh, it's random. But well, like when they come to an intersection, they like pick one, like one of how many ever ways to go, right? Right, and that's what um, that I just finally got that fully working this morning. Awesome. So when they're they're looking at their feet, like with a collision point. Mm-hmm to see when they're reached the center point of a grid square and they check to see which kind of tile they're on, whether it's like four way top left down, you know, top up, right down, whichever way they have available, whichever direction they're going Mm -hmm. and they'll change direction or stay going the same direction. It doesn't necessarily change. Yeah. I remember like doing something similar to this when I did my Pac-Man clone It's called note chopper. And it's like, you get to, but it is kind of like 3D, so you're constantly checking which way you need to go. But it's similar. When you get to an intersection, you got to pick a random direction, then turn and yeah. go in there. took direction. me a couple of tries to get it working. I first uh, I tried to do, like, check if they were at a place meeting, if they were on collision with the particular road, mm-hmm. and then decide determine which direction they were going and what it should change to. Yeah, and that really wasn't working because I um, I needed to know which road could like intersection they were coming to before they got to it. Yeah, because you don't want to go backwards. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So, um, I, I started doing some stuff where I was using like the sign of the x move and y move and like uh do an x previous and y previous and stuff to try to figure out which direction they were going and what intersection they were coming into the tile before Mm -hmm. but that got messy so instead of doing it by road collision with the road tiles i switched it to being by direction first checking which direction they're going yeah because that cut down the number of potential tiles that they'd be going into because there's the the corners and the three ways, if, if they don't have an entrance from a particular direction, then I don't need to waste time checking for it. Yeah, save some CPU cycles there, not having to check everything. Yeah. But yeah, I think anybody then, who's ever like tried to do a Pac-Man clone, this sounds very familiar. <laughs> Common problem. Oh, so you got uh, the pieces so you can like, just like drop them in? or? Yeah, they're all just objects. Oh, like I've cool. been messing with the uh, Game Maker Two, the layer. So I have like the the ground layer. Yeah, which would be like the city limits, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then I have the road layer, is the the roads, and then I have the player layer, is all the people. Now that's pretty cool. If you can like on the and then fly, I have a, U- a UI layer. Yeah, like on the fly change, like this this uh, path or. Uh, the layout and how. yeah i'd be able to drop them in or cre- even create them with a script or something like that oh. or change it if you like rotated one they would uh change the way they're going or whatever but they do go off if there's no oh, road no, they'll, they'll, just, they'll just go forever <laughs> off the edge uh, but i, I was trying to see hard. how how long it like <laughs> took to make them all leave <laughs> yeah if they're just yeah. going random. The next because- thing I want to do is create a thing where they'll be able to have a targeted tile in mind and try to pathfind their way over to it. So if I tell them to leave the the grid mm-hmm. and go out here, like how long to make them be smart enough to like know 
if they're already on this road or whatever, then not turn. Just keep going straight out. Or if they're over here, like to mix the turns you need to make to go toward that point. This seems kind of like an isometric Lemmings game. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I I have a couple ideas for where I'm going with the gameplay, but for now I'm just been messing with getting everything kind of working. Just the, basic get, mechanics of how things move around. Yeah, getting these roads up and running. It it took a while. It, uh, it was it was messy at first trying to get them to like turn the right directions and not get stuck or not just go off the side of the roads or whatever. Yeah. To yeah, get it all proper very cool i think you got the start of something really cool there a, a gameplay that i've never really seen before uh, yeah really interesting to see where you take this game i was still planning on being a uh, mobile with it i guess but i'll need to pick up the studio 2 mobile license because i don't have that one yet yeah, because I, I bought Game Maker 2, and I just got, like, the base version for whatever, 60, 80 bucks. But then, like, every single platform you want to build for. I think you get Windows, Mac, and Linux for free. But I think yeah. HTML5 is extra, mobile is extra, Windows Store is extra, and it's, like, $300, $200 or $300 add-on. I'm sure they'll eventually come down, like, on a Steam sale or something, so I guess I'll... Just be on the lookout for it. Yeah. Um, don't really need to pick them up until you have something ready to export. So the desktop license is plenty while you're developing. And Game Maker 2 still is relatively new. I guess it's about a year. So. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this uh, the workspaces thing. It kind of throws me off a lot of times where it when it opens windows in other places i had problems with that too the windows and windows and windows and some things you got to click on the right area to get the things to pop out and switching between like the code and the uh graphical yeah the room yeah and yeah. like i did move different. some elements over here to the left uh, just to make it more like how i'm used to game maker one being having the resource tree on the left and then i put the room properties over here but some like just how where you get to some of the basic stuff like room creation code and uh viewport stuff i don't know it's, it's kind of it throws me off i gotta click around for a while to find stuff i know the cameras and the viewports were completely redone for game maker 2 because i remember yes. like on my i couldn't uh, even imagine doing what i just did with this scaling and draggable camera and game maker one uh they made stuff a lot more accessible with the camera system yeah i, I think it's a lot better I, I just know i was doing my little platformer for one of the gm48s and i was looking up camera code and it's like oh if you're using game maker 2 all of this doesn't apply it's like yeah the camera system's totally redone so it's a it's a lot easier to kind of take create a camera mm -hmm. and actually have it be a camera and like manipulate it how you would think to manipulate a camera if you wanted to move its x and y and stuff like that you can do that it's not like changing the bounding areas of the view window or the uh messing around with like window height minus viewport height minus whatever x w view and x view and stuff uh it's yeah it's a lot easier so if you if you need to get into camera stuff with game maker 2 there's a couple good youtube tutorials that'll get you up and running pretty fast yeah and it's I'm, it's a lot more like um logical i guess than game maker 1 for anybody that messed with cameras in game maker 1 I just remember with my platformer, I would just like make the level like really long, like a Super Mario level. Like I don't know how many uh, columns that would be, probably like a thousand columns, and then like twenty column or twenty rows high, and then you would just move that viewport with the player as he moves around. And but there's like different things you can do to like not move the camera if the player hasn't moved like a certain. That distance, or if you hit the very far end of a wall, then you stop the camera there. So yeah, it sounds like they did a lot in Game Maker Two to make working with the camera easier. Yeah, 
I did have, let's see. Yeah, I made this one of the other little things I was testing. Um, no? Okay. And... Looked like you had some uh, text on there, level information or something. Yeah, I got to turn back on some of the other code. I had turned it off while I was messing with the drawing. Right here. Looks a lot like my code. I go in there and comment things out and uncomment things. And <laughs> it's like, oh, I was maybe. doing a, like a an XP bar. Oh. So, yeah, there we go. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> There's a little. There's still some stuff with sprite depths and stuff, but. R P G Tycoon. Quite yeah. I mean that's one of the things I'm going with. That's. Build the game and then have a bunch of players in the game level up in the game. Very cool. So yeah. So each of these little characters has its own meter that's filling up, and I guess that'd be like. I don't know. You could use that to apply to different things, like somebody building something or powering up or yep. leveling up to the next level. And you got the uh, and that's all just random on there right now too. So some of them take a really long time, and some are fast. Could also be a road rage meter, road rage meter, to where when they get angry enough, they just crash into everything else because they got so angry. <laughs> Well, uh, one of the things I've been messing with right now that I'm trying to figure out, so like the uh, the pink part of this mm -hmm. is is what's picking up on where the mouse is, mm -hmm. so that like or where the touch is, so that the whole thing slides up and down, but then the buttons would still click if you click the buttons. Yeah. What I was trying to do if is if I had like um, however many of these you know, 10 or whatever, that you'd be able to scroll it up out of the window, and instead of being visible there like that, it would go, uh, you know, behind or not show as it leaves the window kind of yeah. thing. Looks like but there still... should be some masking or something that would take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't found a way yet that did it, like, pixel perfect, where it didn't just, like, make the whole thing disappear as soon as it touched. Oh. So, like that it would still be kind of like half there mm -hmm. or less than and slowly disappear or you'd be able to drag them back and off the screen. It could also be paperwork to where you have to read the entire thing and then sign at the bottom and then just flip it away and then something yeah. would happen. I'm thinking about I'd just make it the, the length of the screen so you wouldn't actually even have to see it or whatever. Yeah, but. yeah you wouldn't have to worry about it then. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know how you would... I know they have something similar in Unity. Like you can put an image on top of an image and they got a mask property. So if you go outside the lower image, then it just it doesn't show it. Yeah, I tried... Like Unless I make the border of the object like big enough that the whole thing would kind of slide behind it. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, then it would like still poke out at the top of the window if it's just a like a bar, if it's not big enough to cover the whole thing, you kind of yeah. still see it behind the other mask. Um, I just, I haven't really started tinkering on it too much. That guy's level 11. He's going. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like you made a, a lot of progress here. I mean, that's pretty amazing to get that much working. Little yeah, it's been a couple in. weeks, I guess. I mean, I, I haven't been dedicating my time to it, but it's it's been little things like I kind of I carry a notebook around with me. So when I have a thought about how I might do something like these bars, I, I try it out. And then once I get that working, I move on to something else like the roads. And it I'm kinda just going to kind of reminds me of Pac-Man with RPG elements to it. <laughs> and maybe Lemmings thrown in too. <laughs> I still I haven't quite figured out what the art should be or what my plan for the art's gonna be so that's it's still just kind of placeholder stuff now but it's good to save that for last i mean it's good and that's one thing i learned over the years i mean get your core gameplay working first and then you can always add the art later <laughs> but yeah that's uh kind of what i've been up to very cool 
Well, I got the screening thing for my game here, so we can look at this if I can get it to work. Oh, okay. Let me, let me Hopefully. Oh. I guess I'll just have to do new game. And then I can press F11. What? Okay, that's not working. That's strange. That's strange. Just yep. change it to the, just to the window. For some reason, it just really wasn't liking the full screen mode in Game Maker. Now, Joe, yeah, because when we're looking at Joe's game in Game Maker, it's just a window. Yeah, I'm just I'm sharing the full monitor on the screen share on Google Hangouts. Yeah. But then I'm just I'm running doing. the program in the window. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Hopefully this works now. Right now, it's begun with the actual game. Okay. No, I have to actually do the screen share. Yeah, we share should see the camera screen. right now. Uh, okay. Yep. Can you see this? Yep. We see. Okay. Yeah, we see it now. Uh, see the little skeleton so, guy there. Collect sand, and then it shows how much sand he got there. And I haven't actually gotten back from this area yet because I'm really bad at the box. So I'll probably change him up a little bit, well, and then I crash into a gear. I like the gears in the background. Or is or so you avoid the gears, is that right? Yeah, the gears are physical objects. Oh, okay. They kinda of blend in there in the background. Yeah. I'll probably put gears like on the outside of the level parts. So those parts are designed because you can't actually get there with these here. Oh, it looks like that wall jumping working. That's really cool. Yeah. Good. Now that part right there is going to be fairly important, that dotted line. Because now you can't escape. you got to get that guy to shoot a gear into it. Uh -oh. If you die first. I'll probably change that up a wee bit, but the concept of that area is you get that sand, but then you got the turret firing at you. So you got two things to worry about. You collect the sand and avoid the gears. Yeah, like an Indiana Jones type thing, but instead of a big ball, you're getting chased by a bunch of tiny little gears that explode into dust. Yeah, that one guy didn't like it when you stole the uh, that sand right there. <laughs> so yeah. it starts shooting at you. So is there any way to get out once you, it looks like you're trapped in there? There is. I've done it before. It was like, it took me a very long time in that because of how I designed it, I'll probably change that to where this is lower down so it's easier, or higher up so it's easier for the thing to shoot it, or make it to where you can enter in through here, or have that wall just be destructible. Yeah. So since I don't want to waste a bunch of time trying to get that sand, I'm just going to leave this room. Yeah. There's a bunch of side challenge rooms over here like this isn't this is just leads out since it's hard to get back up through there and you can also die there's a sand in here <laughs> the sand's kind of everywhere i guess the, these areas are kind of challenge areas but it's probably because i'm not that good at the game so very cool you drop into here. Kind of reminds me of these. Metroid with the different. Areas. Yeah, it's kind of going for that, like a Metroidvania, Metroidvania style, but you play as a slug, and it has collect-a-thon elements with collecting sand. And the thing with the game was the pirate captain was crazy, and he thought sand was valuable for gold or something. And it's not, but you're collecting it anyway, since you have nothing better to do. Because you're a slug, and slugs don't do much. <laughs> so is, uh, after you collect all of the sand, is there like an end game? Uh, do you win? or? Well, you're supposed to be... Well, at the end of the game, like when you actually leave the area, you can't go back in there, so you're supposed to collect as much sand as you can, and you're supposed to have a certain amount by the end of the game, or the pirate captain just 
burns you alive or something. You die. <laughs> and you have to start the game all over again. Probably. So, yeah, this one's called Ink, right? No, so this game is just called Pirate Game Platformer. But I haven't changed the name because it's just the base source code that I changed. So I'm going to change a lot of how the game actually works and just have that as a base because that's kind of... I have a feeling that's a little bit illegal. Well, I guess they did put it on Humble Bundle, so it's illegal but not bad illegal. <laughs> which is a Jew. I can't get out of here. Even though I've done it before. Originally, I had the turrets to where, at one point, they would follow you around and go through walls. And so, I had two of them. And it was just a terrifying noise of this, these thuds as this thing chased you. Which I probably would incorporate into another enemy later on in the game. That would do the same thing, but instead of being a triangle. It'd probably be like a ghost that threw axes or something. Yeah. How can I not get back up here? It looks like you got a lot of the fundamentals working, like the, the camera movement and the wall jumping and yeah. your collectibles. Looks very cool. I went the wrong way. I was trying to get down there. I was trying to get back over here. The uh, next Ludum Dare and the Game Maker 48 are on the same weekend. Oh, are they really? The April 20th. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll do another kickoff. Uh, I guess we could do a combo Ludum Dare GM48 kickoff. I mean, mm -hmm. the, there's nothing stopping you from submitting a game made to both if it oh. meets all of the rules for both. Yeah. If you do the compo and in Game Maker, then it would fulfill all the rules of Game Maker 48's thing, too, that you make all your. You just assets. have to make a game that applied to both themes. <laughs> yeah, that could be tricky. Which I think that would be doable depending on what the theme is. I mean, it's also the same weekend as um, Marble City Comic Con, though. Uh, oh, okay. Over at the Knoxville Expo Center. Yeah, I think here's I the boss. About that. Which I, yeah. I got a flyer for it uh, yesterday. Yes. There was um, the the guy who runs it. His name is Shannon. Mm -hmm. He was uh, at a thing here in Morristown. Oh, okay. Mm. And they were what? like just a community uh, event thing. Yeah. Well, um, I have. I'm the glitch, apparently. Yeah. I got all the sand in the area and it didn't count. I'll have to fix that, but I'll fix that eventually. So this is the game so far. It has a little bit of issues, but it's not quite done. I like the little skeleton some... guy there. Yeah. This What's whole that? area was going to be filled with like other pirate characters, like little crabs with pirate hats and a shell guy who would have told you something in every level, like some advice on how to beat it, like how to do wall jumps or something like that, as if a pseudo tutorial character that was like hidden in very weird places. And this is just a game so far, there's not much to it. So you got a lot of the fundamentals working. And... Got your What's the That's number by the sand? What that is that? the amount of sand you collected, but I don't know why, but it's not displaying at all. So I'll get that fixed if I can figure that out. Which hopefully I will eventually. So let's just stop screen. All right. So do you have anything to show, Levi? Or uh, you have a couple of things, but yeah, I was just gonna say, Joe. I know that uh, April May time frame is always busy. I know our friends in uh, Lexington they have their vector conference where they do a lot of game development talks, and also around that time is also MomoCon. So it seems like everything's like right there at the same time. Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing anything for MomoCon this year. I, I think I'm think. just going to go down. I'm not going to do a table or anything, but 
Dylan may be doing a talk or two. I'm not sure. Okay, so I'll show off what, what I've been working on. Uh, share screen. I did get invited to uh, one of the middle schools here to come talk about game dev during their career day. Oh, th that would be fun. I did one for like this homeschool high school class a couple of years ago, and it was really good, and everybody seemed to really enjoy it. Okay, so I made like a simple chess game, if everybody can see that. I'm, I just showed the video, that way I don't have to deal with running Unity or anything. But yes, it's basically a 3D chess game. really doesn't have much AI, but you can like hover over the different pieces and they'll highlight. And then once you select it, then it will turn green and then it will show you all of the spaces available where that piece can move. Um, or if there's a piece that can be captured, then you can click on that piece and it will capture that piece. Um, took about a day to do most of this. I did the camera rotation later. Uh, so whenever the turns change, uh, then it rotates to the other side. So that player can get their perspective. Uh, and yeah, added some... Does it get to be on a single machine though? What's like that? Be play it's two players on the same computer? Yes, yes. Um, or whichever. This weekend I started working on AI. Just got like a simple, okay, the a, the opponent can move a piece forward. So there's still some work for that. But yeah, right now it's still two people uh, on the same machine, um, not networked or anything like that. The hardest part was getting this stupid castling thing working. It's like one of those like lesser known rules, or I guess everybody that plays chess knows about it. But at the beginning of the game, if you don't have any pieces between your king and rook, then you can like kind of swap them. Uh, you move yeah. your king over two spaces and move the rook to the other side. So it kind of broke the rules of the game, or at least the way I have it, had it programmed. So that took some extra time getting that working. There's some things I don't have programmed, like pawn promotion. If you get your pawn to the other side, it, I don't have it where you can uh, change it to another piece. And I don't have like any checks for checkmate or in check. So you just got to play by the honor system. <laughs> uh, but when you do capture the opponent's king piece, then then it does go to the game over state. So, uh, so I worked on that. I submitted my Turn Back the Clocks 4 game to Dream Build Play 2017. That's the one uh, that's kind of like Pachinko or Plinko. You shoot your little balls and you hit all the clocks. And if you hit the little slot there, then it brings up these slot machines. I thought I had a video. Maybe it's at the very end. Yeah, there it is. And then there's like mines. I've probably talked about this before, uh, but there's mines you got to avoid. Those will destroy your balls. But uh, yeah, and I have that out on Xbox One in the creator section now. So if anybody out there is interested in playing it, you can get it on Xbox One creators. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about this month's topic. I really didn't have a topic for this month. Uh, so this is basically the two-year anniversary since the Knoxville Game Design podcast started. Um, I think it actually started in the middle of January 2016. Uh, but it's been a year since uh, February 2017 was when we first went to this online format. So I'm calling this two years for the podcast. So I was going to do a look back at Knoxville Game Design, some of the history, uh, how the group got started, and things like that. Um, so first of all, I was going to show this post that Mike Neal, who used to run the group, uh, and he's the one that kind of started the whole thing, uh, he posted a really good thing on the history of the group uh, before he like left us and went away, <laughs> took a hiatus. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in like all the details, you can read this. It's on the Knox Game Design website. So from what I understand, there was an I uh, group uh, at ITT Technical College. They had a game design 
program. So you could go there and uh, take game design classes. And one of the instructors uh, at ITT was Josh Ferguson, uh, who used to come to our group meetings. And uh, so they started the Facebook group. And currently our Facebook, our Facebook group is still out there. Uh, you just got to send out a uh, request to join and we can add you in there but it's been going since i think 2010 um so they had that facebook group for their game design classes and everything and then mike had uh his knox and a group and i think jacob and jeffrey might have been a part of that uh where mike would get yeah mike would get together with uh some of the uh kids uh and like teach xna xna was a game development library um where you could create games for the xbox 360 and uh publish them on other platforms and things you could like make windows games and things like that but it's basically a 2d game development environment called uh xna so mike started a group uh specifically on uh, teaching XNA and other things like that. Um, so basically, those two groups got together on uh, Facebook and kind of merged together, and that's what kind of started the Knoxville Game Design Group. Um, but even before that, I know Mike Dillon, who's frequently on our podcast, and Cicely, uh, Mike's wife, they did a podcast called Game Marks. And they did that from November 2010 to around March or May 2013. And they mostly did Xbox Live Indie Games reviews. Um, a lot of their videos are still on YouTube. Uh, so you can check those out if you want to go back and look at some of those old reviews for Xbox Live Indie Games. They did some programming talks too. And I know they, for a while, they did interviews with game developers and i think that was around 2012 or so because i remember i would sit in the chat room uh and i think that was like saturday nights and they would go for a couple hours and do their podcast there which was really cool i thought it was a really great resource that was out there um another component to knoxville game design has been code stock and I think I first went to Codestock in 2011, and I met some guys. I met Mike Neal and also Chad Carter. Uh, he's not in Tennessee. I'm not exactly sure where he's at, but he um, works at Microsoft, the Microsoft representative. So he would always come to Knoxville and do talks on game development, on XNA and things like that. Another guy, Chris Gardner, uh, he's from Huntsville, Alabama. He actually started his own a uh, technical conference in Huntsville uh, called DevSpace. And he's in and out. Uh, he's been, uh, I think he had some temporary work here in Knoxville for a little bit, but uh, he would always come to Codestock as well and do uh, game development talks. Uh, as I mentioned before, Mike, he did a few talks, uh, Quest for Fun, among some other game development talks. And I also did uh, talks on Blender. I did a... Uh, lightning talk on 6502 assembly uh, and also i did one on playmaker for unity um, i know code stock is coming up i can't remember which month it is this year uh, i'm not sure if there are any game design talks this year i know they've already closed submissions for that but but as i was talking about earlier the uh, game marks podcast they did a really good interview with one of the guys that I mentioned earlier, uh, Josh Ferguson, and also Forrest McCorkle and Michael Hogan. The three, three of those guys are Chaos Soft Games. Uh, they developed Evil Quest, uh, which was on uh, Steam a few years ago, and it was fairly successful, and also on Xbox Live Indie Games. So they did a really good uh, uh, interview with those guys. Uh, a few years ago so i'll post this up on the the links for this podcast if anybody wants to check that out it's a really good talk so i actually met these guys the chaos soft guys at pelican it was kind of like a geek gaming anime convention in 2012 and they did a talk on uh how they developed evo quest and things like that so really good uh talk by them and so 
in 2013, that's when we started having the monthly meetings. Uh, we started meeting at the JFG Coffee Building at the Old City. That was the old tech co. And we met there for a few years. Eventually, moved, we moved kind of to the back area. Um, but when I started meeting with the guys there, uh, it was around the time of Dream Build Play 2013. And that was the last Dream Build Play on the Xbox 360. And Mike and Dylan developed a game called Captain Dubstep, which I don't have video of it pulled up right now, but you can find uh, that on their site, on their YouTube channel. But basically it was a Metroidvania type game uh, where you used a dubstep gun and I guess you shot people and you could make them dance and things like that. Uh, let's share this back out. Um, I developed a game called Resistor for that competition, um, which was a puzzle game in XNA. You can find all of this uh, in uh, the archives on the Knoxville Game Design website. You just got to click all the way back to the beginning. I'll also mention we do have under archives on the menu bar. You can click on games, and that will show all of the games that the group has developed for various game jams and competitions and things like that. So if you go all the way back, you'll find these old games that I'm talking about right now. And uh, so for that Dream Build Play, Josh and Forrest uh, developed Evil Quest. or They had Evil Quest already developed, but they went ahead and submitted that um, for that competition. Um, so basically our group, we started doing Ludum Dare in April of 2013. And uh, we did that for a while. And let me pull the camera back. Stop screen sharing. Get me on here. So one of the accomplishments for our group was getting in Metro Pulse. This may come out backwards on the camera right there. But uh, Metro Pulse came out and interviewed us for um, that Ludum Dari. I think it was Ludum Dari 28. It was uh, late 2013, early 2014. But uh, we were like the feature uh, article. Uh, I can't find it. It is online as well, which I can bring up. But uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, you can see we got a picture of Jacob in here, right over here. Well, it's from my first game. Yeah, that, was that your first one? That was, uh, I forget what it yeah, was called. Yeah, that was my first one. Uh, I think it was Weird Kingdom or something like that. Yeah, Weird that's Kingdom right. Then they All had the snakes and the... They oh. had one gunman over there. That was the game that oh, I yeah. developed. The theme was you only get one or you only have one. And then they also interviewed uh, Mike Neal right there. And there's me. They actually came to my house and sent it, sent a, a professional photographer. And he had all his cameras. They came to my house, too. Yeah, they had all the lighting and everything. And then wow. there's... Yeah. There's uh, Josh and Forrest over here. They actually had a game on Xbox Live Indie Games before called uh, Chaos Shift. That was their first game. But that was really cool. That And we got a lot of... I think that's when Ruth Ann started coming to our meeting. She read about us in Metropoles. And it was like one of the highlights in the history of Knoxville game design. Uh, yeah, so let me go back and share... So you can actually, I don't know if we have, so here's Mike's Quest for Fun uh, slides. It's on speaker deck. I'll link this. I know Mike gave this talk quite a few times, or at least I heard it quite a few times. It kind of became a running joke. Um, but yeah, on my website, I'll link to this. I got the PDFs. So unfortunately, Metro Pulse is no longer around. We're like one of the last, <laughs> maybe that isn't a good sign, but we were one of the last, in the last few ep uh issues of Metropulse. But basically Metropulse was an entertainment magazine for free. You could pick it up at the newsstands uh, here in Knoxville. There's all of us sitting there. Um, and they did different things like people doing movies and plays and music and things like that. Basically just what's cool and going on around in, in Knoxville. So... You can find that PDF online. I'll link to that. Um, so I when... that. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, 2016 
right here at code stock and the very last one that uh we did uh was a game jam panel so all of us got up there and we gave our thoughts there's jeffrey and jacob and dylan and me and mike and basically we talked about what goes into developing a game and how we prepare for a game jam and things like that so it was a really cool time good experience getting good exposure getting out there in the community and talking about what we do and everything. Um, and we were very busy in 2016. Um, we had Open Streets Knoxville. It was at the Emory Place, back when we were at Emory Place. And we... Uh, That's my aunt and uncle. Yeah. Yeah. So we basically all got together and showed off our games, set up monitors and uh, where people could come in and play our games. And they had like vendors outside selling stuff and all that. So that was Open Streets Knoxville in 2016. Then we did Maker Palooza. I know, Joe, you were at this one. Yeah. Uh, you, you had a booth. I don't know if they do Maker Palooza anymore. Uh, it was at the, I think, uh, uh, Pellissippi State Strawberry Plains campus in June 2016. I know this was the second time they did it, and I think last year I actually sent them an email asking, "Hey, are you doing Maker Palooza again? We'd be interested in setting up setting up again." Uh, but they said they weren't doing it last year. But maybe they'll bring it back. I, I don't know. But yeah, that was a good time. Just more exposure for the group. And there's Joe's dumpster yeah. table right there. <laughs> I distinctly remember not being there. Yeah, there were quite a, quite a few people that showed up and talked to us and everything. And uh, it, I think it was a good experience for us learning how to run a booth just like before we do it, like at a big time conference where we're paying hundreds of dollars. There's pictures of feet. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that one was uh, more our age group too. Like the open streets thing kind of was more just anybody local and there was other you know crafting type things with woodwork and honey and candles or whatever but then the the maker palooza was more like tech focused yeah it like more our kind of crowd of people yeah i remember there was like people with robots set up that would shoot basketball and more tech and things like that but yeah like you're saying yeah it seems like that was more of our our demographic there <laughs> Yeah, hopefully they bring that back. I really had a good time. and um, So here's another one that we did in 2016 was the Emory Place Block Party. It's kind of similar to the Open Streets Knoxville, except this was just Emory Place. Oh, kinda, so yeah, I was at that one. I wasn't at the Open Streets. So I was at this. I remember being Yeah. Yeah, I remember, Joe, you had stuff set up, and Jacob, and I think Jeffrey was showing off his... Um, uh, MakerBot is that what it's called? I've heard my mind's kind of going blank, but yeah, his, his stuff with the MakerBot and everything. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good time showing off our games, um, just letting the community know what we're doing and what we're all about and everything. So let's see here. So in 2017, we did the meetup at or the get together at the Sun Sphere, and we had one table. We were all kind of crowded on one table. They had tables all around the Sun Sphere. There's a video out here which I'll link to, uh, but just another opportunity for us to go out and show off what we do in all our games and things like that. So yeah, uh, I'd been in the Sun Sphere before, but. I never like was there for like a meeting or anything like that, a get together thing like this. And yeah, so yeah, Joe, you and Dylan, and I, I was at MomoCon too as well last year. Joe actually had an entire booth set up where people could come by and play his games. I think you had prizes where people could win a prize by picking a ball. Uh, yeah, I had a couple different things going on, uh, but that was that was a good experience too. Yeah, really. And cool. I got a good like uh, two hundred emails or so on my sign up sheet from that. 
Yeah, that's a good way to build a mailing list. I mean, I, I'm really not good. I think I have one set up just for my personal game projects, but I don't have anybody uh, signed up for it. But yeah, definitely if anybody is out there is thinking about putting putting together a booth, that's a good, that's a great idea, Joe, to have just like a place where people could uh, write their name. But didn't you say you had problems like reading some of the handwriting? Yeah, some of the, when I was putting the, typing it up afterward, like, um, some of them you couldn't tell, uh, like if it was at Gmail or Hotmail or something, or some of them didn't, some people just didn't write that. Yeah. Uh, and other people just had really cramped, tiny handwriting that it was, couldn't tell, like, if letters were the O or the number O or something like that. So I didn't. I think out of the emails, maybe like 40 of them didn't work. I got bounce backs. Oh, yeah. And just got, I didn't try to like decipher them and see which ones could have been what, like an L or an I or a number one or something like that. It's, it was okay. Still got a bunch, so. It's still a good way to promote your games, and you're able to give out your cards and stickers and things like that. And just bring yeah, I had a... F- Right after that is when uh, Khufu's got greenlit, too. So I think that might have helped uh, get some visibility there on the greenlight page, get people voting. Yeah. Um, I was actually reading an article. I think it was on Gama Sutra. I'm not sure if it's still up there. Let me see if it is. But it's called, like, the Acquisition Funnel. I wasn't going to talk about this. Uh, But I I will link it to the the show notes. Um. But it goes through like the different levels of getting awareness for your game. So like starting out, you're like at level zero and it's like nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows about your games or anything. But then you get like this awareness. But then you got to kind of hook people into coming back or building the mailing list so you can update the same peoples. And then eventually you turn these people who are just aware of your game into fans of your game so then after they become fans and you can like actually try to sell it and i think the point of that article was you're not going to get everybody not everybody's going to be interested in everything but it's just building that awareness if you just throw your game out there on wherever then nobody's going to pay attention but you just got to build that relationship uh with your customers out there um yeah so the last thing is uh, the podcast, which I kind of mentioned earlier, this is kind of our two-year anniversary, uh, started in January of 2016. Uh, it started out sort of just like a game review show. Um, from, I that. Yeah, yeah, I think Jacob, you and Jeffrey were on the one with uh, the first I remember, one. Was it I remember one? being on the... Dark Mouse one and being on the what was the other one? The Beginner's Guide. The Beginner's Guide, yeah. Uh, I finished the Beginner's Guide, but I didn't finish Dark Mouse. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dark Mouse was kind of hard to play, but yeah, that was a pretty cool podcast. Uh, we all went out and we played a game over the month. It, it had to be like a, we had some. There were some rules like it had to be under twenty dollars or something like that. And uh, the first one was uh, on Undertale because both me and Mike played it, and we're like, oh, Mike was like, hey, you want to get together after the regular game dev meeting and talk about it and everything? It's like, oh yeah, sure. So. We did that for a year. We did uh, different games every month. It typically had to be an indie game. Uh, we did uh, was Shovel Knight, uh, Inside. Played some really bizarre ones, Franbo. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we did that for about a year. And then in February 2017, that's kind of when we went to this online format. It just kind of worked out better for a lot of us uh, to be able to do it at home and online. Then we got a lot of new people that showed up, or a few new people at least, uh, from different areas around the southeast that actually join us here uh, on the online version. We still get together, just not, just not as much, like three times a year for kickoffs and things like that um oh yeah but as far as momocon goes joe had the uh booth but dylan actually did a talk on 
game development for fun and not for profit. I think I missed this one. I think it was like the day before that I went down there. But basically, he go he went and talked about uh, being sort of like a hobbyist, just doing kind of like me, just doing it for fun and uh, not trying to like get in the industry or making a living from it or anything. But yeah, Dylan's slides are out there on his website, so I'll link to these. Uh, but he went into some of the different. Uh, this is seems like this is kind of targeted for toward people who just want to get into game development, but really don't know how to get started. It's kind of just like an overview of what's out there, what tools and engines are out there, and things like that. So definitely recommend checking this out. Um, talked about the sun sphere. Oh, and then just finally, just want to ma mention like all the people who have come to our meetings, the Knoxville game design meetings over the year. Um, if you go to the knoxgamedesign.org, uh, if you click on directory, uh, this started out like it's profile pages, but now we just have like a list of everybody who's joined. Some of the people that I mentioned earlier, like Josh and Forrest of Chaos Soft Games, Chris Gardner, who I mentioned earlier, uh, Amos Gardner, he's one of the ones that we met through the online uh, meetings. He, he showed up a few times and showed off some of his Unity work. Jake Gillenwater and King Sport, he's developed a few games. Paul Green was a guy who came to a few of our meetings before, back at the Tech Co. He participated in Ludum Dare a few times. Uh, John Lane, who I mentioned, he's the one that's looking for the Blender guy. Uh, Ruth Ann, yeah, she was a great, she's a great uh, uh, processing programmer uh, in Java. I think it used like a Java plugin. Haven't heard from Ruth Ann in a while, so if Ruth Ann, if you're out there, let us know how you're doing. Um, hope everything's going well. Uh, Joe, Mike. Zach Parrish, Chris Rag Rathgeb. Yeah, he came to one of our meetings, showed off some of his work. Chad Shepard, he's still like doing a lot of work. Uh, he primarily does um, things on the tablet uh, using some augmented reality. He had like a fidget spinner game they released not too long ago. Then uh, Jeffrey Turnmeyer. Yeah, Jeffrey's actually developed a, a game, <laughs> the lawnmower game. It seems like he did something else. For one of the other Ludum Dari's. And then Jason Yarber, he was a uh, he came to a, a few of our meetings, participated in Ludum, Ludum Dari. He's with Cup Code Gamers, so check him out as well. So yeah, everybody that's that's uh, participated in our group, they got links to their their homepage and games and things like that on the directory page. Yeah, so that's all that I had for this month. I'll go back around. Jacob, did you have anything else you wanted to show off? Mm, no, I didn't really have anything else. Okay, well, thanks for showing up, showing up this month and showing off all the cool stuff you've been working on. All right, thank you. Uh, Joe, did you have anything else you wanted to share? Well, not yet. I, I kind of joined a group off of Reddit a couple days ago, like earlier this week. Oh, okay. Where I'd answered a uh, post asking for people. There's like six or eight guys in there now. They're kind of still in the organizational stage of figuring out who's going to do what. But I've never really worked with a team before. Oh, okay. Just like a game but dev I might team? Have some, yeah. And they're using Game Maker, so that's what I know. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe that'll open some doors and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I've never. Yeah, really I'm hoping so. Yeah, I really haven't work much with other people we've always talked about like doing group stuff but uh for like ludum dare or things like that we never have gotten around to it um yeah so um joe you're double square joe as i mentioned earlier and double square joe on twitter um i'm levidsmith.com you can find me there i'm ga tech grad on twitter and other social media uh, be sure to check out knoxgamedesign.org. That's where you can go to find out all of the details on our upcoming meetings and get-togethers. And you can also find links to this podcast. Uh, you can get this podcast on iTunes. 
Uh, you can also find it on YouTube. So I would recommend the YouTube, but I mean, I know a lot of people just like to listen to the podcast at work or while like on their daily commute or things like that. But if you get the video version, you can actually see a lot of these games that we've been developing and things like that. Um, Also, make sure if you're interested in getting notified on our upcoming podcast and meetings and get-togethers and things like that, sign up for the mailing list. It's right there on the main page of noxgamedesign.org. Just type in your email address and press subscribe, and you should be good to go. So anyway, that's it for February 2018. Uh, I think Dylan's supposed to be back sometime soon. I think he's going to be doing a talk uh, in our group about save states sometime soon. Then we got Ludum Dare, what is it, 41. Uh, yeah, as Joe mentioned earlier, we got both uh, Ludum Dare and Game Maker for GM48 on the same weekend in April. So that's going to be a very busy month for us. So, well, uh, I think I'll definitely try to do a, a double. A double? Make both games at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're let's not. See, I have to stretch the idea. Yeah. As long as, yeah, Hopefully I, it's not uh, conflicting themes like ancient something and then like future something or only one and then many lives or something like that. If they're opposite themes, that'd be tricky. But Yeah, I think that would be a good challenge. But yeah, and then you can just make one game for both game jams and submit them to both. They all, the GM48 last time, um, I didn't have time to participate that weekend. It was the same as my daughter's birthday. But, uh, oh, okay. If they, they almost, one of the top finalist things, it's not the theme that got picked, but one of them was Virtual Pet. Oh. Like, that could be an interesting Game Jam theme to see what comes out of that. Yeah, I like that one. I remember having a, was it Tomogachi? Yeah, Tomogachi yeah. back in the day where you had to, like, take care of your pet and clean up the poop and feed it feed and all it that. and walk and, yeah. Yeah, it's like a little egg what that if- you carried around in your pocket. <laughs> I'd kind of, it almost like, I'd like to see that as a gem game to see what would come out of it. Yeah, I think that would be fun. I feel like I've seen a lot of like, you are the enemy or. Um, I've seen a lot of minimalism and minimal, yeah. things like that. Which I mean, it kind of is a game gem, so minimalism is going to be prevalent anyway. Yeah. Well, days to make it, there's not going to be a lot of complicated stuff going on. Yeah. But I, I'm excited. It's skipping a couple jams now. I've got some uh, energy built up, ready to. It it's good to take a break. I kind of got to that point as well. I was like, okay, I, I did my little chess game this month, just so I can say I made a game this month. But I'm, yeah, doing it for five years. I mean, it's it's always good for us to take a break and yeah, do some other things, go out and visit relatives, and <laughs> get out in the real world and everything. I do have uh, personal news. We are we're uh, pregnant again. We're having a second baby. Oh, congratulations! Congratulations! Yeah. So that's your second one. Yeah, we find out on Wednesday what the gender is going to be. So oh. that'll be some news this week. Yeah, you'll have to let us know. Yeah, you, your little girl will have a a, a baby bo- or a little brother or little sister there. That's that's exciting. It's always fun. And yeah, the, so, the older, she's she's three now, oh, Annabelle. Wow. I know you've brought her to a couple of our, like, kickoff meetings there. And, yeah, really <laughs> cute there. <laughs> I have to get her started on some games soon. <laughs> <laughs> have a whole family of game developers. Or you can get her to do the art or something like that. <laughs> yeah, she likes, she's played the uh, some of the Lego games, like, on PlayStation. Because mm-hmm. they're pretty... Simple. She doesn't really play per se, but she'll run the people around and laugh. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me. I know Mike and his family. They did one of the Ludum Dari uh, the, as a group, and he did it with like his daughters, and he got his daughters to do the voice acting and maybe some of the art and things like that. There's videos out online. I'll link yeah. that as well of how they. I think it turned out pretty good. I think they like finished top ten or something. Uh, I think it's Jungle Noir or something with a bunch of animals or something like that. So yeah, it's good to get the family involved and yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's gonna wrap it up for February 2018. We'll plan on being back uh, next month in March, second Sunday 
every month and uh, hope everyone out there is doing good and see everyone next time. Bye.